Now, there's a story we tell ourselves, a story we believe to be true. And that is that human beings are fundamentally selfish and greedy, that we grab what we can from other people, we try to knock other people down in order to get to the top, and that while we might not be like that, almost everybody else is. And this story, this belief, soaks into the very fabric of humanity, even though when we look around at our friends and our neighbors and most of the people we know, they aren't really like that. Well, it's not them, it's all the other people who are like that. Is it you? Are you like that? Well, there you are, the story is not true. But it's a story that doesn't come from nowhere. It's a story which is very deeply implanted in our minds. It's partly informed by the biblical notion of original sin, partly by the Hobbesian notion. Uh, we're all engaged in a war against all. But it's been greatly reinforced in the past 50 or 60 years by the dominant economic and political ideology of the day, neoliberalism. And this says that uh, we are all engaged in competition with each other just about all the time, that competition is the defining characteristic of human beings. And they even come up with a term for the sort of people they believe we are, homo economicus, the um, self-interested, rational, maximizing person, always trying to grab whatever wealth and power is available. And homo economicus is very useful because you can model the behavior and say, economies function in the following way because people function in the following way. Therefore, we can determine that if we introduce factor X, people will behave in, in form Y, which gives us result Z but it bears absolutely no relationship to what actually happens in human society. I was reading a fascinating paper recently in a psychology journal which said that Homo economicus is an excellent description of chimpanzees and a very poor description indeed of human beings because uh, human beings are unique in their degree of altruism and empathy. While chimpanzees might possibly share a tiny bit of food with someone in their own social group, but only after persistent, aggressive begging on the part of that someone, human beings will share large parts of their lives with other people. I think of my Dutch mother-in-law, uh, whose family um, took in a Jewish boy during the German occupation at a risk to the entire family. This man. This boy was a total stranger to them. They could all have been killed for hiding him in their attic. I think of people today who take refugees into their homes and treat them as if they were family members. And then I think of the fascinating studies I've read, which show that from the age of 14 months, children start to try to help each other. By the time they are two, they start to share their most treasured possessions with unrelated other children, and, and, and the inherent drive towards sharing and generosity and engagement is there in everyone except the 1% of psychopaths who unfortunately um, often tend to be in positions of political and economic power. <laughs> but we have to break that belief because it's a completely ill-founded belief and it's one of the things that sets us apart. It's one of the things that I believe is responsible for the epidemics of loneliness that are sweeping across the world. The commonest disease from which we now suffer is the devastating disease of loneliness. Seven billion people walking past each other, scarcely raising their eyes to meet each other. There are more people on earth than ever before, and there is a higher proportion of lonely people than ever before. The super social mammal, the mammalian bee, has forgotten how to talk to each other, and that's partly because we believe quite erroneously that everybody else is out to get us. Well, you might be, but I'm not. And actually, that simply is not the way we work. So instead of just moaning about it, what I've tried to do 
is to do a little tiny thing towards it, which is to start a collaboration with a, a musician I've admired for some time, the wonderful Ewan McLennan. And together, we have written an album. I wrote the first draft of the lyrics, and then Ewan um, um, corrected all my mistakes and started again and produced something, well, I think really beautiful out of them. It's called Breaking the Spell of Loneliness. It's not out till October, but today, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, for the very first time, we're showcasing one of the tracks, and um, it's called Such a Thing as Society. I expect you'll, you'll get the reference. Um, so, Ewan McLennan. Thanks all very much. Good evening. So well and you have to feel It's each for himself that spun us the tale If I am to live then you have to die This my friend is the time honored lie This my friend is the time honored lie Now there's such a thing as society That keeps us in losing our minds That's working and living and laughing together That makes us human The glitter of gold and the silver charade We see ourselves in the image they've made Have we fought for the scraps since the very first day? Do we really believe there's no other way? Do we really believe there's no other way? There is such a thing as society That keeps us in losing our minds That's working and living and laughing together That makes us human It's not who we are, it's not how we live In the depths of disaster we hurry to give We lend our hand to strangers we meet And we go without so that others can eat We go without so that others can eat There is such a thing as society It keeps us in losing our minds It's working and living and laughing together That makes us humankind Watch it all wither in the light of the sun In the warmth of our deeds and the labor we've done Uncover the light and tear down the wall United we'll stand, divided we'll fall United we'll stand, divided we'll fall That is such a thing as society That keeps us in losing our minds That's working and living and laughing together That makes us humankind 